Welcome to another episode of StuTube. You guys, I am back from vacation and I am ready to jump back into the charts here. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about, you guys, is uh, I'm seeing a lot of frustration in the markets. Uh, everybody thought that the Bitcoin ETF approval was going to lead to a direct moonshot. And you know my opinion on that. I don't give a shit about fundamentals. I let the charts tell the story. And this is a perfect example of that. Uh, yes, this is one of the biggest things to happen to Bitcoin in its history. And the market still didn't really react to it because for one, uh, you know, we were already front running that news. Anybody who was buying Bitcoin was buying on the fact that, you know, we were just assuming the ETF was going to be approved at some point. Once that approval happens, who's left to buy? Uh, very similar. I know MDX Crypto had touched on this, that after the FTX collapse, uh, who's left to continue selling uh, after that selling pressure kind of uh, just dwindled away? Uh, who's left to sell? Everybody would have panic sold at this point, just like everybody would have been panic buying up until this point. So uh, you guys know, middle of December, I was actually calling for the Bitcoin approval to be between January 8th and 11th, and we were going to top out around $48,000. Uh, look at that. That wick is right on the week of January 8th. Uh, it happened right on January 10th, if I'm not mistaken. CBOE launched their futures trading on the 11th, which is why I figured that the ETF approval would be uh, in place. They, you know, these types of things are not going to be approved until the right people uh, had all their egg ducks in a row. So uh, that was kind of my thoughts there. But I've been talking about this level for well over a year, you guys, and I'm going to play you a little clip about that. Um, ever since we were trading down at these levels, I was calling for a rally to top out around that $48,000. And I'm starting to see a lot of frustration in the markets. Everyone's blaming uh, XYZ. Everyone has all these reasons why we're dumping from 48,000. Manipulation this, manipulation that. It's the crypto market. It's always going to be manipulated. There's always market makers uh, watching these key levels. I mean, it was a key resistance level, a key Fibonacci level. And like I said, I've been watching this level for well over a year at this point. My timing was off a little bit. It took a little longer to play out than I ex than I uh, originally thought, but that was my target, and it was eventually hit. So to see us getting rejected here is no surprise to me, honestly. And I, again, I'm seeing a lot of frustration across social media. I'm seeing excuses. The only reason the price declines is grayscale customers are dumping. Uh, guys, I mean, I see a whole bunch of reasons, mainly just in the charts. I don't care who's dumping. And the chances are that, you know, if these big firms and all that kind of thing are dumping, it's probably because they have a basic understanding of how charts work and where basic resistance is. And they're probably just reducing their risk, taking profits, all that kind of thing. So I don't think this was all <laughs> that was uh, uncalled for at all. Um, in fact, I just want to take a little look here, you guys. Uh, you can see here, this video was made over a year ago. I believe it was actually in, uh, I think it was around, uh, where were we? Uh, right there, that would have been right around here. This was back last September, October, uh, when I published this video here. And let's just take a look at what I had to say here. Uh, I'll speed it up just so that it's uh, a little quicker here. Uh, one thing that I want to point out too, just something to be a little cautious about, is if we do end up getting a nice big pump to the upside, I think a lot of people are going to get very bullish at the wrong time. And I think that we're going to see a pretty harsh rejection if we end up climbing to like that 49 or 50,000 US dollar level. And my reasoning for that is if I pull my Fibonacci's top to bottom rather than bottom to top, looking for levels of resistance instead of support, you can see that the 618 lines up fairly well with around 49,000 or just above that. And on top of that, it lines up with this lower high here. So I think that's an important level in the market. Uh, again, like when it comes to Fibonacci's, I mean, there's a reason I have my 618 and my 786 a different color because those lines can be respected quite well. And uh, just going back to just show you some examples of what I mean here. If I go to our previous, well, I guess start of our bull market, end of our bear market, you can see after we set the lows of our bear market there, uh, that's exactly where the price ended up getting a harsh rejection at first. Everyone started getting very bullish on this, this well, even this is a mini parabolic run here, beautiful upswing there, but people were getting very FOMO-y thinking that, you know what, this is the next bull market, we're just absolutely exploding, wham, hit the 618, get rejected hard, about a 40% correction or something like that. Uh, so you can see that played out beautifully, or not beautifully, depending on which side of the trade you're on there. And as well, going back to our previous market cycle, even dating back a little further, you can see that the same thing happened, pulled top to bottom, uh, bottom of the bear market there. We started rallying. Where did we get a harsh rejection? Was right at the 618 fib. So it seems to be one of those repeating uh, technicals with Bitcoin. As soon as we end up reclaiming that level, you can see that it's going absolutely parabolic. So I think it's going to kind of be the same thing. Um, yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, you guys, like I said, that was about 14 months ago that I was making that prediction, and we absolutely did that. You know, we rallied up to this level, and now we're seeing that little bit of a rollover. So, yeah, I, I don't know exactly where this dump is going to end. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense that we would pull back and retest this blue box that I have, which would basically be the old support of, uh, I'm going to call this phase one of the bear market, just where we were... Um, just distributing, right? I mean, you can see that uh, sellers took control. Uh, we did keep finding support at that level, eventually broke, found resistance at that old support. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense that now that we reclaim that level, we would come back and test that and see if it will hold from here. Uh, something that I do want to talk about, though, uh, you guys know I've been talking about that potential scenario, test the 618, test back down into this blue box and carry on higher from there. I do want to talk about the possibility that this box does not hold and you'll see that I now actually have this green box here uh, Once again, you guys, you know on shorter time frames. I love the 786-886 Fibonacci pocket And that's exactly what this is just looking for uh, where we could accept uh, expect to pull back to if this uh, support resistance zone is not going to hold uh, because obviously in the previous market cycle it never did hold I mean it, for the most part it held we did have that fake out break down below uh, this was during the COVID crash. So yeah, take it for what it is. Maybe it's just because that black swan event, there was obviously extreme panic in the market. So we did get that quick dip down below and quite a bit below, uh, but it was quickly bought back up carried on from there uh, and I'm thinking that you know it's absolutely possible we see something similar happen this time because let's just pull a Fibonacci now because you guys know that I love to look for repeating uh, cycles repeating patterns that kind of thing so let's just go from the bottom of this bear market up to where we got that 618 rejection and look at that that's a lot closer to where we ended up finding support obviously we just had these wicks into my 786-886 Fibonacci pocket and I really wouldn't be all too surprised to to see that happen again uh, you guys know on shorter time frames that's my favorite uh, zone to be looking for entries uh, whether it's looking for resistance uh, looking for shorts or uh, looking for longs in support at those fib levels so uh, that is another level of interest again we we're gonna have to watch because this blue box is obviously a strong level of support back way back here very strong level of support very strong level of resistance so yeah we're gonna have to see what happens here but if we do end up dumping through this blue box I think it makes a lot of sense we would test into that 786886 Six Fibonacci pocket because that pocket is respected so well across so many different time frames that I really would not be too surprised to see the the trend eventually work its way down there again guys this is a weekly chart I'm not saying that's going to happen very uh, very soon uh, I'm leaning more towards you know the better part of this year I I really am not expecting all too many crazy things to happen with Bitcoin um, I, I think next year is going to be a wild one for the Bitcoin bulls. I think next year Bitcoin is going to be in a very good position. This year, I'm not so sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'll change my opinion while the charts change their structure and that sort of thing. You guys know I trade much shorter time frames than this anyways, but I just want to be uh, well aware of all these different scenarios that could play out. And again, just that's my favorite Fibonacci pocket. I would not be all too surprised to see us test back down into those levels. So, uh, yeah, that's basically all I wanted to touch on in this video. Just a quick one for uh, getting back into the swing of things here. I was out of the country for over a week there, so uh, just getting back into the swing of things here. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I, just across social media, um, I, I can just see a lot of frustration and a lot of excuses coming out. I mean, to say that the there's ever only one reason why we're seeing this kind of price action when this is something that I was claiming 14 months ago saying this was going to happen. I mean, do we really need excuses at this point when the charts were just telling the story a year in advance? Um, so yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on that, you guys. Um, other than that, uh, that's all. Like I said, that's all I wanted to go over today. Uh, tomorrow, I will be doing a live stream with the MDX Elgo Legends. Uh, that will be shared on my channel shortly after. Usually takes a couple hours to upload or whatever, but I will get that posted tomorrow evening. Um, other than that, guys, 
Um, if you do like the indicators that I use, as well as uh, looking for some no KYC crypto exchanges to get your DGEN on, uh, there is a few links in my description down below for some uh, discounts and bonuses and that sort of thing. Uh, but with that, Obviously, none of this has been financial advice. I, I always say this, you guys. I think it's way more important to be able to react to the charts rather than predict. Yes, predictions are great. It's great that I, you know, it's good that I had this prediction and I kept going on about it for the entire year because I wanted to make sure I wasn't one of those people FOMOing in when we got these to this level. Because as I said in that little clip that I played for you, People were going to get bullish at the wrong time. Everyone was getting super bullish on the ETF news right as we came to that important resistance Fibonacci and structure level here. So, I, I mean, it was just a way to keep my head clear, keep mentioning that level. And here we are re respecting it exactly uh, how I was kind of expecting it to. But trading is a whole nother game and I am trading on shorter time frames anyways. So, uh, yeah, with that. Again, obviously none of this has been financial advice. Always do your own research. Form your own opinions, guys. Uh, do a bunch of back testing. If you if you ever uh, find yourself questioning things, looking for other people to answer things for you, asking random strangers on the internet for advice, um, do some back testing. Go back in the charts. Find trade setups that you seem to that just kind of catch your eye over and over, and go back and play the chart and see how those setups have played out in the past. Kind of figure out your probabilities of what your trade setup is going to work. Uh, find out where your take profits are going to be for uh, most efficiency in your scalping or trading, swing trading, depending what your strategies are. But uh, with that being said, you guys, like I said, I will be live tomorrow. And other than that, it's good to be back. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. With that, stay safe, my friends. Peace.